it's Anne from the Useless Crafter. So today I'm going to be doing Olaf off the mat and I'm thinking about 30 inches. This is a special request and so I ended up using an image from Design Space which I love because then everyone ha can find it easily and then you can practice with this Olaf and unless you actually go to the make it um, screen and actually um, make it you don't have to purchase it so it's a great way to practice and follow along uh, let me show you how to get this image so you go to images and I just typed in Olaf and there were quite a few to choose from but I picked this one in particular because I felt I've done Olaf before um, and so what I liked about this image is that his arms they're in this one's inside this one's close enough so that they will be really sturdy. <laughs> um, I had one that looked kind of similar to this. So the arms, if you can imagine, these sticks are tiny. So they were really flimsy, even with the foam board, because it's really hard to get the foam board to cut and support this. And even then, and I did cut it properly, so there was a piece sticking out. But it's so thin that even the foam board is flimsy itself right there. I really liked this one because the arms were totally in, but this is a print and cut. And you can kind of tell because you have that shadow, so you know that it's not a layer. Um, it's more of um, a print, like a flattened image. So between this one and this one, and maybe a few others, I thought this one was best. So. Click on this one, it's $1.99. If you have Cricut Access, it ends up being just a dollar. Um, so you're gonna insert it here, like so, and it's gonna come up again. So this one I'm gonna flatten, just so that we have <clears throat> a visual of what it looks like um, without it being you know, um, ungrouped and, and moved all over the place. And you can always tell that this one's flattened because it becomes one uh, line item as opposed to this Olaf this one it's every color is its own line item so that's how you can tell the difference and that's why I flattened it otherwise you're gonna have a duplicate of each one and it's just kind of hard to keep track of so okay so here's our flat image here's our Olaf let's shoot for 30 um, 30 inches so I'm gonna type in 30 under the height and let's zoom out for a second. And I like this image compared to the one that I did um, sometime last year. Because last year, my the, the image that I did, the branches up here, I did have to weld them, but they, um, this one is just one piece. So definitely here at the base, it's strong. And then I wouldn't do the foam for these pieces because it's so thin. Um, so our biggest piece here that we're gonna have a problem with is his face, because his face, it starts here, it goes all the way around, and it's all one white piece. So with it being white as well, I definitely want this to be 11 and a half inches. But if you look at this image, if this is, let's just say 10 inches, then these two are another 10, and then here's another 10. I think this can be 30 inches, but we will know for sure right now. So we changed it to 30. Let's go over here, and this piece is, so let's ungroup this, ungroup it completely, and let's look at this white. So we're gonna click on the white, and we're gonna go to contour, and we're gonna contour everything out, okay? So hide all, it's gonna leave the face. Let's see how, long the faces. So the face is nine inches by 13. So it is a little long, but let's see if we rotate this a little bit. If we can get this to be 11 and a half inches. Oh, we're so close. Oh, we did it. Okay, so we rotated this. So the thing with Design Space is how it measures the dimensions is for width, it's the most left to the most far right, and then the difference between the two. So as we rotate this, we're changing our most left and our most right. So you see, and then we're also changing the, the top to the bottom. So over here, you can see that it's much longer. So when we rotate this, our height, we were able to get it to be just 11.2. So this is great so now let's contour let's bring all the pieces back so we're going to click show all and we're going to 
we're gonna deal with it right now so this is one piece here two and three so we're gonna need three copies of this three copies total of the image and then we're gonna separate it because as is it's 19 inches by 24 so obviously we can't cut it so let's go to contour let's hide all but we want all these oh uh, you know what let's show all for a second okay so let's click on this and this so we're removing all these pieces okay so we're left with just the face so the face is 11.4 by 11.2, so we know we can cut that on the Cricut. So now let's go to contour and let's hide all. We want this piece now and the button. We don't want the face. So this little piece right here is only 6.8 by 5.4. Let's go over here and contour. So we wanna hide all. We now want this piece with this little cutout and we don't want the face. Did I hit that? Okay, yeah. So this is this piece, and we actually need a duplicate. It was in four pieces, and I thought it was three. So when you use contour to separate out the pieces, however many pieces you want it separated into is how many copies you want. So now this one, we're gonna click contour, and we actually want this piece and not this piece. So now our white, oops, we don't want that piece. So let's go to contour and let's hide this. Okay, so this piece is 7.3 by 9.6. So our white is gonna be seamless. Everything is gonna be seamless on Olaf, except for the black background. But if you think about it, look at the, the black background. It's covered by everything what is left of this outline is so tiny so even if there's a little slice a seam in it you won't notice it because everything else is going to be beautiful and i did olaf i used white glitter cardstock and i used brown glitter cardstock for the um for the arms and the hair so everything was glitter he looks so darn cute. You're not gonna notice the black seams. And the black seams, it's gonna be like an inch total when you add up everything. So I wouldn't worry about it. He's gonna look amazing. Okay, let's continue. Here's our blue. Our blue is good. The orange, if you use a orange glitter cardstock for the nose, it's so cute. All right, so here's our hair. Our hair is good. Oh, and all of these are separated, our eyebrows, the branch. Okay, so this is simple. And then we have our buttons. So our buttons are all together. I would slice them out so that we can, um, when we go to the Make It screen, which we will, I'll show you in a little bit. Um, I'll show you how to group them so that it's more efficient when you go to make it. So let's slice this out one at a time. So I'm gonna go like this and grab just the rocks and the square, and I'm gonna slice. And this gets it so that each rock or each button is its own little piece. So the slice results we can delete. So here's this guy that we just sliced out. So it's by itself, and these two are still together. I'm gonna rotate this so that it is completely covered here and then grab these two and slice. So now we have this rock, oops. This rock is by itself, or button. And then this one as well. Okay, so we're pretty much, we're done, except for this. Okay, so let's see what else. Um, I think we're good. So I'm gonna delete this. We have just this guy left. Okay, so let's bring in, we're gonna bring in six squares, okay? So let's go and bring in our first square. So as is, it's almost, he's 14 and a half inches by 30. So we can't cut this on the Cricut. What we need to do is we need to slice them up into pieces that we can cut. And then we're gonna piece them back together like a puzzle. 
so he'll be taped up but then all these pieces are going to go and sit on top and cover all those seams that we just sliced up and he's going to look like i said he's going to look very very cute so here's our first square we can technically cut 11 and a half by 11 and a half right but i'm going to just do 11 by 11 because i don't like dealing with half inches and let's just put it right here we're going to go to our position feature over here and we're going to round to the nearest whole number so 9.11 becomes 9, 3.9 becomes 4. And what this means is it's telling Design Space your X coordinate is 9. So go over 9 units, go down 4 units, and here's the beginning of our square. We're going to bring in another square, and we're going to put it really close, and then we're going to round. 20.3 becomes 20, 4.083 becomes 4. So now we have two squares that are completely flushed with each other. And how I know that they're flushed, this one is at um, 9. So 9 plus 11 is 20, and this is at 20. So I know they're right up next to each other. Um, and the reason why you want this is because you don't want it to overlap, right? And then you, don't, you also don't want any gaps. You want all these pieces to butt up against each other to make it as seamless as possible. All right, so we have two squares that are flushed with each other. So hit the shift key and go over here and um, click on the other square. So both squares are selected. We're gonna duplicate. So we're duplicating a set of flushed squares. We're gonna put this set close to the top set and round to the nearest whole number. So 8.8 .8 becomes nine, 15.25 becomes 15. And then duplicate that set. And then we're going to put this down. So now you're gonna have six squares completely flushed with each other. So 8.9 becomes nine and 26.13 becomes 26. And we're good. Now go over to your right hand side panel, scroll down until we get to our black image. Now there's also a gray outline and you can see it's hidden to us. I'm just gonna delete it. Okay, here's our black background. Arrange, send to the front, and we're gonna look at this right now to make sure that we're slicing six big pieces, okay? What we don't want is something like this. And I'm gonna zoom in so you can see it. We don't want this little twig to be hanging off by itself because that means you need to keep track of this little piece, you need to tape it to this, that's a pain in the butt. So what we want is something like this, where all three, or, or all four or three, however you wanna count that, is one piece. So I almost want something, oh, that doesn't work. Maybe something like this. So this is one piece, this is another big piece. Let's scroll down and see. It's gonna go straight down and like this, so this is all one big piece. All right, I think I like where this is sitting. Okay, perfect. So let's zoom out and slice away. So we're gonna slice one corner at a time. And I'll move it over so that you can see it as well. So now this piece is one nice big chunk, right? So let's slice out this piece. Oops, hold on, let me undo that. Let's slice out this one, we'll, we'll move it at the end. Let's just go all the way around and slice it up. This is just a glitch, but it should be fine because look at our pieces. So he's still good, right? These are all connected, right? This is one big chunk, I love it. Let's see, okay, so let's slice this one over here. And then let's slice it from the top. Okay, so I think we have all our pieces. So here is our top piece. Here's our middle piece. And then here's our bottom piece. All of this we can get rid of, we don't need it. And the reason why I keep it together like this also is because um, one, I wanna make sure that all the pieces cut and they look good. And then two, I because you're using black cardstock, sometimes when I 
when I um, pull it from the cut mat, so like, it, you know, you send it through the Cricut, it cuts out, I pull off the black piece, the black looks the same on the top and the bottom. So I can't tell which side is up. And then if I flip it, sometimes I can't, you know, it just makes me think a bit before I can figure out where the pieces go. If I have it like this, I know this piece looks like this and it goes in the top right. It's just easier that way. Okay, so let's go to the Make It screen so we can see what everything looks like. And it's coming. <laughs> I'm gonna take a sip. Okay, um, this little caution note, just click OK. So here's our face. It's showing that it's going past 13 inches. Just go to um, this rotating tool and rotate it so that we can make it fit. And rotate it some more. Let's move it over and rotate it a little bit more. Okay, so now this will fit you can cut this on a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock on a 12 by 12 mat. If you don't have a 12 by 24 mat, just click on this piece, click on the three dots and move object. We're gonna move this one maybe to this, this one and see if it fits and it does, right? So this, this fits, let's see if we can move any other. This piece is too big, I think, okay. So this piece, but you might want to rotate it so it's like slender because if you use white glitter cardstock, then the next time you have five by 12 piece of cardstock that you can use for something else. So on this one, you're, don't worry that it says you need a 12 by 24 mat. Just use a 12 by 12 mat and then you have this. It's going to cut out beautifully. Let's look at our black pieces. So here's this. Okay. Um, I think we can consolidate a little bit more. So let's move, um, or maybe not. No, I think these are big pieces. Um, I don't know. Let's try. So let's click on this, the three dots, move object. Um, Let's see, let's move it over here. Okay, so this is kind of big. Let's move this one. I don't know if I'm being silly. Move this one over to this, all for trying to save one piece of cardstock. Let's see if it works. Oh, it's so close. Let me see if we can turn this at all. No. Maybe? No, it doesn't fit. So if it doesn't fit, we just click move object again, move it back to its own piece. So I tried, but it didn't work. Okay, so here's all our black pieces. Here's our nose. Okay, our sticks. These can be consolidated. This one, let's click on this, the three dots, move object, move it onto this one. And these, um, and you can rotate this you know, so it just depends on what what you have. If you're using a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock or if you're using scraps, I don't know. But, you know, you could do something, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just being silly right now. I mean, it just depends on your scrap. But like I said, um, this way you have a bigger chunk for next time. It's easier to use. Just make sure that none of your pieces are overlapping because then it will cut into each other. Okay, here are our buttons. That looks good. Here's this piece, that's it. So you don't pay until you go to checkout. So this is a great tutorial. Do it as many times as you want to just to practice. And so I'm gonna try to do more of these design space images because then we can all practice on the same piece. So please give me your feedback, uh, comments, questions, whatever, just let me know. And then also if you have a special request like this person, just tell me what it is, um, whether you want to make it 26 inches or you want the name on there, cake toppers, whatever. I would love to help you out. Just give me your information here. And if you need to send me a file, you can send it to an, A-N, at theuselesscrafter.com. All right. Thanks, guys. I hope this was helpful. See you next time.